and welcome to this Mark's Reviews and Tutorials video. We're going to look today at um, just a method of how to get uh, gate posts in. When you put in gate posts in, they need to be um, strong. You're going to have um, hinging on one side and you're going to have latching and catching on the other. So they've got to be strong. Uh, when you're doing uh, gate posts, they always have to be in, in concrete because of the hinging and the latching. Um, other posts, if your soil's good and solid, you can just put them in soil and, and like ram it down with a crowbar. Um, if you've got a crowbar like that with a ramming end on it, you can ram the dirt tight enough. But for a gate, uh, you're always going to need a bit of concrete. So what we've done here, we've um, dug our holes. And as you can see, there's plenty of room around the poles so that the concrete can go down. Um, which will set those nice and firm. But when it comes to swinging a gate, I mean, you can, with each pole, obviously put your spirit level on and get vertical this way and vertical this way with each pole, but you also have to get them parallel this way. You've got to have a line where your fence is going to run from the wall to the other point. So the poles have got to line up with that as well. So there's an awful lot of things going on. So one of the things you'll see, I've got two light little framing pieces and they're just screwed in. Um, one of the things you want is a consistent gap between here and here, and the same at the bottom, down there and down there. So by setting that first, I've actually got um, 90, 900 mil or 90 centimeters between there and there, and between there and there. Of course, if you're buying a, a pre-made gate, um, it'll have to be measured so you've got gaps and everything. You have to calculate it off the gate that you make, or hopefully, if you've got a pre-made one, they'll tell you what size you need um, for that. I'm making the gate, um, so therefore I can make it to suit the hole. So it's 90, um, and this is going to be the gate here. So now that I've done that, when I get this one parallel, this one is automatically going to be parallel. So it'll hold them together for me, which is really important as I'm putting the concrete in and concreting. It just makes so much less work. I then have to level them this way, both of them. Um, and then prop them and it'll hold in place. Just doing that, it makes the post so much more stable and so much easier. And with a gate, you're always doing two. So rather than one and taking forever, then another and taking forever and bumping that one while you're working on this one, you do them both together um, and it's much, much quicker. So the other thing I need to do next is get a string line. Um, I've just done it by eye so far, digging the holes. I'll put a string line from the edge right across so that the posts are in line with where I want the fence over here. It's going to be a, a safety fence and I'll, I'll do another video and put a link up to it here about the regulations that I'm using. You got to check your um, country and state as to what the regulations are for a pool fix. We're going to make a nice um, picket fence using these um, cypress pickets and I'm using cypress posts and it's all just going to be oiled. I'm not going to varnish it or paint it. Um, these, as you can see, these posts have got an amazing grain in them so that's the natural type look that we're over and the posts too have a look at them treated pine was half the price of cypress posts but we just wanted something that uh, looked the part we can oil up and um, have them here as part of the spa the next stage of um, getting these right is the um, putting a line it's just running a string line across now you might think oh you know i don't need to do that i can do it but i but I tell you what, this makes all the difference in the world when you're digging posts and putting your posts in. You have to get it right at this point, otherwise your fence is going to run just all over the place. And when you look along the top of it, um, it's going to look shocking. So you set up a string line. I've just gone with a brick over here. String line tied to the top so it comes along. This also allows us to square up the post. You see, we can turn the post this way and that way to get it square with the line, which is going to matter when the beams come into it. Uh, and then again here, see we're actually going to move that hole. We need to dig this hole out here so we can move the post across more. Now, when you're working out, you need to square this off something or measure off something. Now here we're coming off the spar. So I've actually measured it. As you can see here, I've measured the distance from the edge of the spar to here and the same here from the edge of the spar to there. So that's how I got my square because this fence here isn't square. The house is square to the spa, um, but not that fence. It runs on an angle. So when I first started laying out, I was actually near the fence. I got a pretty good eye for squares and things like that. So I squared off the fence, but I was about three feet out. I was way down here. So you can't square off something that's not square. Um, so I've measured off there. So the string line, I'm going to put a screw in once I get that exactly where I want it and the 
equidistance measuring from there back, there back. You can do a three, four, five triangle. Um, a, a right angle triangle is always um, three, four, and then five across the pivot here. So that's how you get a perfect square. So if you measure 50, 50 centimeters, 50 inches, you measure whatever you want up here, um, and you measure the distance along your wall there, the, the three and the four on these two axes, it's always gonna be five in between. So you bring this one in to get it to five and three, four, five, you'll end up with a perfect right angle in the corner there is another way to square this off if you just had a wall. I'm measuring mine off the spot. Okay, so we're at the stage, we've um, poured the concrete in and um, we put an extra stay up here to hold it vertical as well. The more stays you put in place, the less you'll have to hold it. Um, and as we put the post in, obviously the string level is very important. Get the face of the posts um, square against the string and against the string. So they're in the right spot. That gets you in line with the fence in parallel. And the other thing that matters is, of course, the square of the post. So we need to check the square both ways. And you can see there, she's beautiful right in the middle. And the same on the back, um, nice and square. And the, you check the other post. Because I've got them braced top and bottom, just one brace won't do it. But brace top and bottom, if you've got one square this way, that one will be square as well which it has stayed square. And then on the back here, see that's nice and in the bubble as well. Go forward a little bit. See the concrete's still wet so we can move it. And if you do need to move it a fair bit, push it forward and then um, just press down with whatever device you use to put the concrete in there. I just use a little fork like that over there, cut the top off the bag, laid it down and then just basically forked it out and then um, just use the fork to move it around the post. And then I also took the time, you see the post, base of the post is wet because I, I got my hose and actually just washed the concrete dust off the post. Really easy to do now, almost impossible to do later. So no matter what depth we end up, then the post will be nice. So those two are set. They've just got to be now not bumped, not touched, and we'll be able to hang a gate in there, um, hinge it and swing it, and um, it'll work great. The next stage, we're gonna bolt pieces of timber onto the wall there so we can run the pickets across that little bit. And then this run here, again, the back of a timber fence, you've always got your rails here and here where the nails are, there's rails on the other side. So we're gonna get a timber, vertical timber and bolt it into those rails. Um, and that will then give us something to attach the um, crossbars into and then the pickets will go on from there.